Okay, let's continue. <clears throat> We're going to the book of Exodus, 29th chapter. And we're going to look at verse 45 and 46. Exodus 29. Y'all getting a lot. Exodus 29, 40, 45 and 46. And I will dwell among the children of Israel and will be their power. I don't like to use the word God because it's dog spelled backwards and it's a European invention and Lord. So you me saying power because I'll explain as I go through scripture more so than uh, just you hearing my reasoning. The reasoning will be pertaining to the scriptures. Um, <clears throat> Exodus 29 and 45. And I will dwell among the children of Israel and will be their power. And they shall know that I am the most high, their power, possessive pronoun, Possessive pronouns showing ownership, their power, and they shall know that I am the Most High, their power. The children of Israel will know that the Most High is their power, that brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, that I may dwell among them. I am the Most High, one must go aside, their power. Now let's look at Joel, since he said that, look at Joel 2.27. Joel 2.27 Joel 2 and 27 And you shall know you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Most High, your power, and I am a Mashiach, your power, and none else. Nobody else. Is. And my people, who are the 12 tribes of Israel, but you know it's talking about us, the 12 tribes of Israel, shall never be ashamed. Now, when you go to Acts 20, or Acts the second chapter, 21st verse and the 22nd verse, Acts 2, 21 and 22, you see that it says, Acts 2, 21, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on Baha Shama Mashiach Kabashai shall be saved. He said, who was he talking to? He said, ye men of Israel, hear these words. Mashiach Kabashai of Nazareth, a man approved of the most high, where? Among you. Among who? Ye men of Israel hear these words. Mashiach Yavashai of Nazareth, a man approved of the Most High among you by miracles and wonders and signs which the Most High did by him. Where? In the midst of you. Who do you? Verse 22. Ye men of Israel, in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. See? So when you look at Matthew, first chapter, 22nd verse, 21st verse, Matthew 1, 21. And she who is Mary shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahushai, 
for he shall save his people from their sins. You see, it's his and their. He's possessive pronouns that show an ownership over and over again. He shall save his people from their sins. So what did he say out of his own mouth? Matthew 15, 24. Matthew 15 and 24. So we in the New Testament now. Y'all say that's the Old Testament now. We in the New Testament. What did he say? But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's what he said. So he was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. St. John 4. St. John, the fourth chapter. Verse 22. 1 John 4. Verse 22. St. John 4, 22. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship. For salvation, which is power, and authority, is of the Jews. What do you tell the apostles in Matthew 10, 5 and 6? Matthew the 10th chapter, the 5th verse. These 12, Moshe Goshai sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, the other nations. And into any city of the Samaritans, and ye not. Don't go to northern Israel. Remember that? Solomon Dessa had put the Ethiopians in northern Israel. When he removed the ten tribes, the nine and a half tribes, out into the Syrian captivity. He put Ethiopians there way back then. They had been living there from that period of time on. That's why he said, Don't go to Samaritans, and ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This we told the apostles to go to. Go, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. See? Those are orders, those commandments that Amos Echoshah gave them, telling them not to go to the Gentiles. Or well, they couldn't even go to the Gentiles that are Israelites. Just like you out there that call yourself Gentiles today. We got to come to you and let you know that you are the Israelites. But at that time, they couldn't even go to those Gentiles, their own people, until they were endowed with the Holy Spirit in Acts the second chapter. Then they were able to go out and reach the other Israelites that were in the Gentile lands. Like Corinth and Thessalonica, Philippians, and so forth and so on. As you read these letters that Paul wrote to these different lands, and Peter went, you know, to the Israelites that were scattered among the Gentiles also, once he was endowed with the Holy Spirit. That's why the Mashiach of Shai was dealing directly with Paul, through the Spirit of the Most High. Why he's able to write most of the New Testament. You see James, look at the book of James. For all you out there that go to church, you're going to use the book of James and you say you're a Gentile, let's see who he's talking to. You go to the, any of the beginning of these books, they all talking to the 12 tribes of Israel. Period. James, one and one. Just to show you what I'm saying. James 1 and 1. James, a servant of the Most High. James, a servant of the Most High. Now we read how the servants are the 12 tribes of Israel. So he had to be an Israelite to be a servant. In Isaiah, 
44, 1 and 2, and 21. James, a servant of the Most High, and of our power, of Mashiach Yahushai, to, I mean, it's addressed to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings. What do you say? My brethren. See? The 12 tribes of Israel that are scattered abroad. Greetings. So if it's addressed to the 12 tribes of Israel, how can anyone that's a Gentile say that it's addressed to them? It's not. It's not talking to them. That's why I said the Gentile, when the Gentiles, what's reason again? Romans 2. But the Romans 2 and 14. Romans 2 14. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are law unto themselves. See? They're law unto themselves. Because this has to go out to the 12 tribes of Israel. The whole Bible is talking to the 12 tribes of Israel. Like he said, he made the whole world for our sakes. That's why in the end, go back to uh, the second Ezra, where we were crying to the Most High concerning the fact of the matter of us being in the condition that we're in. Why are we in the condition we're in? Because we didn't follow the laws that's commanded for the Most High. So go back to second Ezra. The sixth chapter, we'll pick up where we left off and you'll see. Second Ezra 6 and 57 and 58 and 59. It says, And now, O Most High, behold, these heathen, these Gentile nations outside of the 12 tribes of Israel, which have ever been reputed as nothing, have begun to be powers over us and to devour us but we thy people whom thou hast called thy firstborn thy only begotten and thy fervent lover are given into their hands if the world now be made for our sakes which it was why do we not possess an inheritance with the world? How long should this endure? So we know that it's in the Most High's hand. How long this will endure? It's in the Most High's hand. He the one that has the final say when the king is going to come to Israel. Because they asked him, go to Acts 1 and 6. Since we deal with the chosen, in the spirit, it still goes right along with what we're dealing with. Acts 1 and 6. After Mashiach Hashanah died, rose the third, on the third day, walked the earth for 40 days, this what was asked of him. Acts 1 and 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Mashiach Yahweh Will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Let you know we got next. He asked, are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel? You've been here 40 days, man. you like one of us now. It was out of spirit, though, because we hadn't went through the curses of Deuteronomy 28, 16 to 68 as of yet. And many other things that had to happen. That's why I say this is for us today. We can reminisce over everything that has happened and what's going to be the future. We got the past, the present, and the future. It's all there. We want to relate to something that's happening now, it's right here in the Bible. We want to relate to something that already happened, it's right here in the Bible. We want to relate to something that's going to happen in the future, he already predicted. That's why we prophesy on what's going to happen, knowing what's going to happen. You got to know what's happening to be looking, watching, and praying to see what's going to happen so you be ready. You won't be caught naked. Exposed. Listen to what he said. This is very important. Remember this. As long as you live. Verse 7. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father, that's the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, have put in his own power. See? 
Only the most high know. He told you clearly right there that the most high have put in his own power to know when he's going to bring the resurrection or the restoring of the kingdom to we, the 12 tribes of Israel, as it is written. But ye shall receive power, that's spiritual power. After that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto all the utmost parts of the earth. See that? That's why I told you, once they receive the Holy Spirit, then they can go out and deal with Israel that's scattered among the Gentiles, among the heathen, among the nations, and so forth. That's so why I did a series on Israel is scattered among the Gentiles, the nations, and the heathen. So you'll see that. Because Israel are Gentiles, nations, and heathens too. So they had to go out, like you just said, go out and tell, you know, 12 tribes of Israel, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So as it went out, it's like, where do we go out? We got to deal with these heathen nations that come up and they're they going to hear whatever we're saying too. But we out there to reach the children of Israel, gather, bring, bring, as it says in Isaiah, or Isaiah 49. I believe that's it, yeah. Isaiah 49, 5 or 6. It says, And now, said the Most High, that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. See? Got to bring Jacob, with the forefather of the twelve tribes of Israel, back to the Most High. Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Most High. And my power shall be my strength. And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob. And to restore the preserved of Israel. That's the one third of the twelve tribes of Israel. That's another name. The preserved, the ransom, the remnant, the sheep that hear my shakam shai voice, the justified, the glorified, the called, all which is a certain number, the few, the many, all these different aspects are the preserved of Israel. One third. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles that thou mayest bring. I be my salvation to the end of the earth. See? So this is what we're doing now. We've been a light to the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? Our people. We've been a light to them. That light is bringing the laws back, statutes and commandments back to the 12 tribes of Israel that call themselves Gentiles, not knowing. Because what do you have? The only thing you can do is regurgitate what you didn't hear. No, the Jews killed Christ. We don't want to be no Jews because they killed Christ. But still, you say that the Jews are the chosen people of the Most High. Jewish people, you know, it doesn't make any sense. When you think about it, when you think about it, it doesn't make any sense. Just common sense, but everybody don't have common sense, so I can't say it would make sense to have common sense. Because everybody don't have common sense. A lot of people don't like to think. Especially, you got words in a book, you're going to keep something else you put in the book. So a lot of people don't even like to read. Not something that could be more be more beneficial to you than anything you can else, else you can read. Y'all read them magazines or whatever you got to deal with in your own personal life, whatever. But this is what you should be reading. This, this word is alive. The Spirit of the Most High is here. But you want the Spirit of the Most High without doing what you got to do to get it. Isaiah 34. Since we did, go back a few pages. Isaiah 34, 16. This is what he said. Seek ye out of the book of the Most High and read, Israel. So they program us so we wouldn't read the Bible with understanding. And now that you have the opportunity to have understanding, you still want to follow the oppressor. The oppressive moves that were made upon us, brought upon us, to have your brain polluted because you don't want to pick up the Bible and read it, but yet still you want the most high to do something for you, to be with you. You ain't meditating on it, 
ask you what scripture is that? You don't know? These are the basics, right? We're going over now. You should have this already. Pretty much most of them, you see? This basics. You know, realize that you don't even have the basics. See what he says? Seek ye out of the book of the Most High and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. You can't match nothing with the Bible. I challenge you, bring whatever book you want to bring and see if he can show you the past from the beginning of the world before there was any earth to the present time we live in now to the future what's going to happen in the future and what people are going to be saying what people are going to be doing all of that's here in the Bible it's our guideline it's our instruction manual so seek ye out of the book of the Most High and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. You can't match no book with the Bible. But my mouth, you hear that? My mouth, it have commanded. So if the Most High's mouth commanded it, and you're not doing what he's saying, do that what came out of his mouth. And now you expect his mouth will come with the words that's going to come to him, I say, to come here on this earth to be able to fulfill what it is that you need. When he took the time to let these words come out of his mouth, as holy men were moved by the spirit of the Most High to write this down. For my mouth it have commanded, and his spirit it have gathered them. You know? So it's all here. You have to do that. You want to make it? During these trying times, then you have to do this, people. Or, you're going to be subject to the hellfire. Isaiah 63, 7 and 8. I will mention the loving kindnesses of the Most High and the praises of the Most High. Hallelujah. According to all that the Most High have bestowed on us and the great goodness toward the house of Israel which he had bestowed on them according to his mercies and according to the multitude of his loving kindnesses it's to us for he said surely they are my people children that will not lie so he was their savior see so because ain't no lies going to the kingdom. Straight up. But he says, surely they are my people, children that will not lie. So he was their savior. Savior. So, when we look at... Uh, Acts 5. Go to Acts 5. Does everybody say that the Mashiach of Shai blood, all you got to do is call him the name of Jesus or whatever name you use for him and you're going to be saved. We just, we just read in Acts 2, <clears throat> 21 and 22. He said, anyone that call on the name of, you know, the Savior shall be saved. So ye men of Israel hear these words. So Acts 5. 29 to 31. Acts 5, 29 to 31. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, what they say? We ought to obey the most high rather than men.
the most high power of our fathers. Who is that? Go back a few pages, go to Acts 3.13. Who's the power of our fathers? Who's he, who he say he is? Acts 3.13. The power of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob. The power of our fathers. So the power of Abraham, who had a son named Isaac, who had a son named Jacob. You got to see this. This is the most high's name forever and memorial to all generations. The power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But Abraham had Ishmael before he had Isaac, but the most high chose Isaac. You see? And Isaac had Esau. He was the firstborn before Jacob, but the most high chose Jacob. You understand? So this is what we're looking at. That's 530. The power of our fathers, the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Raised up on my second child, and he slew and hanged on the tree. Wicked Israelites. Give us Barabbas, the murderer, instead of Amashiach Galvashai. Him, talk about Amashiach Galvashai, have the Most High exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Can't get no clearer than that. Because he could have said to give repentance to Ishmael, Moab, Edom, Elam, Ham, any of them. But he said to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. You see? That's the Israel. Look at all. Uh, go back to Isaiah 63, 18 and 19. Y'all got me warmed up now. It says, Isaiah 63, 18 and 19. The people of thy holiness have possessed it but a little while. We only, we only possessed our land of Israel a little while. Our adversaries, we our enemies, have trodden down thy sanctuary. We are thine. We are the most highest. Through a Mashiach Kelvishah. Thou never bear rule over them. Hear that? Thou never bear rule over them. They were not called by thy name. See? They were not called by the name of Yah. Shah Allah. But we were. We're called by his name. Because his name was within our name. But see, we broke the laws of the Most High. Therefore, the things that happen to us over and over again in captivity after captivity after captivity, because we broke his law, statute of commandments. And he told us he was going to do that. John 13 and 1. St. John 13 and 1. Listen. Now, the, now before the feast of the Passover, when the Mashiach of Shai knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. He loved his own. Remember he said in Matthew 15, 24, but he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's his own. See Hebrews 4, Excuse me, Hebrews 7, 14 says, For it is evident, it's a fact, that our power of Mashiach Yahushai sprang out of Judah. You see? And then Jeremiah 14, 2 says, Judah mourneth and the gates there of language, they are black unto the ground. Different shades of brown. You get a description of Mashiach Yahushai in Revelation 1 and 1 and 13 and 15. It gives a clear description of it. It's feet, 
so dark like it burned in the furnace, and brass like it burned in the furnace. Hair of wool. So he came for his people, for the tribes of Israel. From there, go to Romans 9, Romans 9 chapter, in the 11th verse. It says, for the children be not yet born. I mean, the children, these children weren't even born yet. Neither have they done any good or evil because they're in the womb being created. Our former mother Rebecca, womb being created, that the purpose of the Most High, mind you, this is the purpose of the Most High according to election. What he elected might stand. Not of works, because they didn't do anything, but of him that call it, of the Most High. They do it, they couldn't do anything, their babies being created in the womb. Jacob and Esau. It was said unto her, it was said unto her, you go to, back to uh, Genesis 25, 22, the elder shall serve the younger. The first baby gonna be a servant to the next baby to come out. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. So he said he loved Jacob, but Esau have I hated. So how can you look at the most I said he hate Esau here, then all of a sudden now he love him? He said, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Then he said, What shall we say then? He said, What you gotta say now? Is there unrighteousness with the most high? The most high forbid. He said, what you got to say now? You going to say the Most High is unrighteous? The Most High forbid. For well, he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that will it, because they want this, nor of him that run it, but of the Most High that showeth mercy. And he said in Isaiah 14 and 1, for the Most High will have mercy on Jacob, and yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land, and the strangers shall be joined with them. Shall cleave to the house of them. Israel. You see what I'm saying? We plead to us. That's once the world is written of wickedness. When the Mashiach Shai come back to judge and make war. With who? With these other nations. These kingdoms that are set up on this earth, to set righteousness up on this earth forever and ever and ever. As it is written. This is something that I made up. So let's go to Mark the seventh chapter. Since we're dealing with the chosen, Mark the seventh chapter, and I told you why I don't like to use the word God, Lord, Matthew 7, 24. No, Mark 7, 24, so like that. Mark 7, 24. Mark 7, 24. And from thence he arose, so Mashiach gave a shot, and went into the borders of Tyre and Zidon, and entered into a house, and would have no man know it, but he could not be here. See, Mashiach gave a shot, he wanted to get away from everyone. But he could be here, because he did so many miracles that all the miracles he done, because he could put, put into all the books. The books of the world could contain all the miracles that he did, but he could not be here. For a certain woman, whose, daughter, whose young daughter had an unclean spirit, heard of him and came and fell at his feet. So, a certain woman whose daughter had an unclean spirit, she had demons in her, heard of him and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek. So the woman was a Greek. Meaning a so-called white woman. A Syrophoenician by nation, meaning she came from the particular region it says, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. And you know, her daughter had demons. In she had the devil in her. But Amashek of Shai said unto her, let the children first be filled. What children? The children of Israel. Let them get their blessings. Remember he said, but I, he said in Matthew 
15:24, but he answered and said, I have not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So he said, Let the children first be filled, children of Israel, for it is not meet or right to take the children's bread or blessings and to cast it unto the dogs. See? It ain't right to take the children's blessings and cast it unto the dogs. D O G S. And she answered and said unto him, Yes, master. Yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. So she admitted that they all are dogs. And she said that they eat of the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. The little blessings that can happen with them after he do bless the children of Israel. And he said unto her, For this saying, go thy way. The devil is gone out of thy daughter. And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out. And her daughter lay upon the bed. She admitted that they all are dogs. Now, not only that, when you go to, uh, go to Psalms 2216. Psalms 22 and 16. I know it's hurting some of you out there, but it's the word of the most high. It says, this is David prophesying about Amashek Abishai being crucified. It says, Psalms 22 and 16, for dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked, so the dogs are the wicked, have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. Now, who did that? Dogs, the wicked, pierced his hands and feet. The Roman soldiers. The Romans, when he walked the earth, were the superpower of the earth. So called Italian Caucasians are the ones that put the piercing in his hands and his feet. And dog, when I looked up dog in the Unger's Bible Dictionary, it said dog was used by the Israelites pertaining to the Gentiles because of their profaneness and because of homosexuality. Now you know, come on. That don't fit this world. You don't think this fits who's ruling the world today? Same people. That's why when you look at uh, Revelations 11 and 8, Revelation 11 and 8. It says, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is America, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Sodom because of the homosexuality and, you know, men marrying men and women marrying women and all the things that's perverted that Sodomites was doing. And, and then Sodom, the the land of Sodom is the most high destroyed, five cities, Sodom and Gomorrah. This is spiritually America. And Egypt, because America stands for the same principles as Egypt. You got the obelisk in Washington, D.C., you know. You got the principles and all that that you read about in Isaiah, the 47th chapter. Just like Egypt, you see. Where also our power was crucified. The Mashiach Yavashai crucified. They got the, the so called white image set up of a Mashiach Yavashai, where they Jesus Christ, Jesus boys here. Until this day, crucified. It's not real. That's not, that's not real. And yet, still, here it is. Our people who are Gentiles in the mind believe that's him. They believe. To the team. That Jesus Christ is so called white man. That's a lie. All day, all night, 24 7. So from there, the reason why I say, like I said, so dog, you spell it backwards, is what? God. So they use what we call them with no creativity. They made up this word God understand this. And Lord, the original 
King James Bible says Allahayim. Ours. In the Hebrew says Allahayim. Most of the time you see God and so forth. Because the most high and the most high, that's why I say in Genesis 1 and 26, let us go down and make man in our image and our likeness. That's plural. Just a moment. 